All right. Thanks for uh, joining this session. There. Um, yeah. What we're gonna do is to um, uh, have this uh, DX7 FM Mega Best Tutorial Base Tutorial Series. So this is something that I had in my mind for a while, and some uh, um, subscriber uh, suggested this. Um, the you know. Uh, uh, tutorial as well, so to go through the bass sounds and the DX7 FM synthesis is really good at making lots of different, you know, lots of uh, different uh, type of bass sounds. Uh, so yeah, so what we're going to do uh, for this first session, part one, is to going back to basics. And what I mean by basics is really fundamental stuff. Uh, you know, you got algorithms and so forth. It's kind of revising it again. But uh, we're going to tackle it from that, uh, you know, creating a bass sound as well. So, so we're going to learn a lot of things and uh, try out new things. And I'm not necessarily telling you what's the end result, but we, I like to explore the, you know, something that, okay, there's unknown here. Let's try that out. What's going to happen? See what's going to happen. So, all right. Okay. So what we're going to do is going to go through the slides and then make sound at the same time. So what we were going to learn is X, we're going to explore many ways to create the X7 FM bass sounds. So this is part one, starting from the basics, and then we're going to gradually, gradually build up from that. And along the way, we're going to make lots of bass sound. Uh, so, and what we're going to cover is, oops, sorry, uh, tips and tricks for making FM basses. Uh, FM basses. And now, before starting, yes, you need a uh, you know, if you haven't done the other tutorial at the beginner level, well, we can do this and you can go back and watch other tutorial videos as well. Just going to help you to understand more about the FM synthesis. And, uh, you know, you, you need to have a basic knowledge of DX7 or FM synthesis. Uh, as long as you know where to go and stuff, that's okay. Other than that, it's, it's not too bad. And, uh, yeah, you could have a Yamaha DX7 or... Uh, uh, other VST FM synthesis that very similar to DX7, Dex or uh, Aturia DX7V, that'd be great. Uh, you need a quiet press to concentrate for a while, and we're gonna have a bit of fun with it. Okay. So, all right. So now we're gonna go back to the basics, and we're gonna start with algorithm. So now you, you got a DX7. You can see you get 30 algorithm on the panel, and that's where we're gonna start. And you know, again, I've been telling these people uh, through the many tutorials that the fundamental, the uh, most important thing about DX7 FM synthesis is always come back to the uh, algorithm. Algorithm is the most important uh, thing for the DX7 FM synthesis. So yeah. Um, as well as add FM synthesizers, rely on our algorithm to do the modulation, frequency modulation. And the algorithm determines how all six operators interact with each other. You know, some of you may know this, or some of you may not, uh, may not familiar with that. So we're just going to go through this basic stuff. The 32 algorithm for the except mark and mark two. And they are grouped into four major groups, as you can see from the DX7 at the front panel. And it's, uh, they determine the appropriate, uh, so, you know, uh, if, for you to determine uh, that the best algorithm uh, to create a particular sound is a key to creating it, the parts that you want. But that's really the uh, most difficult step because you just don't know how that's going to work. You know what kind of results you're gonna get, and so that's the most trickiest part. So let's look at the uh, DX7 front panel. You got the 32 algorithm here. Now you can see that the uh, you know algorithm is divided into four groups, as you can see. And it's it's in you know, original grouping in just too limited for understanding algorithms better. And uh, if you've watched my other tutorials, I've uh, introduced a concept about algorithm interchangeability, basically picking a similar algorithms and the chop and change, you know, uh, going back and forth or picking a different uh, algorithm, uh, which is similar to the original algorithms that you're starting with, 
but that gives us you know slightly different uh, characteristic to the sound and so forth. So it gives uh, you know I guess uh, you know uh, uh, different options to explore uh, or explore or creating different um, uh, sounds. So let's look at algorithm from a new perspective. Now we talked about algorithm interchangeability, but we're going to introduce something you know different to what uh, what uh, we've already learned. It's uh, you know it's we're going to start look from amount of harmonics and inharmonics that it can generate. So what I mean that what I, what I, what I mean by that is that the, okay DX seven. It's only got the sine wave, uh, nothing else. That means sine wave. It's not overtone, anything like that. It's a pure, it's pure sound. You can say, uh, based on that, you can basically create a complex sounds. So what I what I mean by that, you can start from really simple and just gradually, gradually beat on, you know, build up on that, or you can branch off and so forth. So some algorithms are useful for harmonic rich sounds, the others are not. And you gotta really understand these basic stuff. So I guess my question is, which algorithm is the least capable for generating harmonic rich sound? So what I mean by is that, uh, okay, if you pick algorithms, which one is one that they just it ju you just can't create a very harmonic rich sound because of nature of way the algorithm is designed. Okay, I can give you ten seconds. Just look around the 32 algorithms and let's see which ones that's going to be. Okay, so I'll pop the question. If you can answer it, that'll be great. So, which uh, algorithm is the least, least what about the, uh, capable of generating harmonic? Sound. All right. So, what do you think? From based on the thirty-two algorithms, can you guess a um, algorithm that uh, that, that it just you know uh, based on its design, it just it just can't get enough harm, um, you know, harmonic rich sound. So the answer is is uh, algorithm thirty-two. So it's yeah, it's algorithm thirty-two, because what it's showing is what it's saying that uh, is that the, um, you only have a sine waves, so six operators just generating sine wave per operator, and it's just lined up together. So basically, you just um, uh, using the uh, DX seven FM synthesis as additive synthesis. So you're just adding together. Sure, you can you know introduce a different harmonics because you can change it to okay. You got one, you know, operator one can be just you know it's a ratio of one point zero zero, but you can change the operator two and three and four and five six. Uh, you could have inharmonics, you know, three point five zero and four so forth. But because it doesn't, you know, you don't have a carrier and the modulator relationship, so it's basically pure sine waves uh, just adding together. So it's additive synthesis. Now, so if you look at the algorithms 16, 17, 18, it's a pure FM algorithm that because you only got, you don't have one carrier operators and five modulators and the auto modulation goes to operator one, so which is pretty intense. So that's a pure FM algorithms. Um, yeah, we kind of cover that. And the, you know, use the, uh, the famous bass one sound uses uh, algorithm 16, I think algorithm 16, and uh, yeah, so you can get that kind of uh, harmonic, well, harmonic rich, but kind of metallic sound as well. So here it is. Yeah, so if you look at the algorithm, how it works, so you got the operator two, it's at the branching to generate sideband. Now you got operator four three one, so you that's actually the tower, and the tower. What I mean by tower is that you got three operators stuck in tower, and you got operator six five one. Again, that's gonna be tower. So you got kind of two towers kind of combined together there, 
and you got the operator 6 with a feedback which makes a harmonic tone like a sawtooth wave so yeah algorithm 16 single carry operator 1 is getting 3 frequency modulation yeah that's so that's why it's pretty intense and then you can get that uh, you know quite good bass sound as well um, yeah so operator 2 is generating sideband operator 3 and 5 yeah that's true uh, because you got three of them parallel and it's basically modulating operator 1 at the same time uh, operator 6 yeah feedback now okay let's look at operator 8 uh, sorry algorithm 18 so what you see here is operator 1 again you get all the modulation and if you go look at the operator 1, 4, 5, 6, you got the 4 operator stacking. So I can generate a harmonic rich tone. It's like having a, a feedback group, you can say. So single carry operator 1, yeah. Look about that. So yeah, again, you got 3 uh, branches. Operator 2, operator 3, and operator 4 at sideband. So you can, you can introduce a different uh, ratio and get all the frequency modulation poured into operator 1, so which is again quite intense. So that's that. Operator 4, four operator stack. So you get the higher harmonic or uh, harmonic rich tone. And now again, now what's going to happen with the, uh, from this slide on, we're going to concentrate look at the um, those more like additive synthesis algorithms. So algorithm 31, 32, and particularly 32. So which is, you know, um, it's opposite to operators, sorry, algorithm 16, 17, and 18, because they are they well, they, they hardly any FM synthesis, you know, op only uh, algorithm 31, it's got the operate 5 and 6 uh, thing FM synthesis. Other than that, that's it. So operator 32, there's no FM synthesis. So which, the, so basically they're opposite to operate, uh, sorry, algorithm 16, 17, 18. Okay. Yeah, pure additive synthesis. So no FM frequency modulation, and you're just layering a, a different ratio of sine waves or different frequency, uh, yeah, it's sine waves at different frequencies. And the algorithm 30, algorithm 31, you only got the operator 5 and 6 doing the FM synthesis. So if you look at the other algorithms, so what, how, how that's going to fit into this picture? Well, so, so you can see from here, it's basically telling you that the which ones kind of generate more higher harmonics and it's, and it's other ones kind of generating, you know, lower harmonics, although it could be generating more sidebands and stuff like that. So you got, you know, multiple options. So algorithm two, you got operator three, four, five, six. You got four towers, and which generate a quite uh, you know high harmonic rich uh, sound as well. And algorithm three, it's high harmonic. It's uh, based on that operator one, two, three. So three operator stuck. And uh, now. Algorithm 10 and 12 are capable of producing tones with sidebands. So you can have different ratios and pour that into operator 3 and you get very unique combination of the uh, harmonics. And yeah, so it's, um, yeah, it can, it can inter uh, produce interesting sound as well. Okay, let's look at these ones, these old ones. So you got algorithm 20, 22, and 25. So algorithm 20 has looting the doubles output of modulator, op uh, so the operator 3. So yeah, you got operator 3 here, and you got 1 and a 2, and uh, that's basically doing a double, doubling the output. 
and now algorithm 22 so looting is tripling the output of a modulator uh, operator 6 now algorithm 22 is traditionally used for like brass type sound so if you look at the um, dx7 voice rom and that that's basically uh you know algorithm 22 so it's a brass type turned on the dx7 voice rom that came with that uh, dx7 originally as you know most brass sound is created with algorithm 22 which is mm, not sure i don't think it's it's a really a good um, operator for doing that kind of job because it's you know brass sound does brass sound it's not necessarily uh, interesting or you know realistic it's pretty boring uh, and algorithm 25 now three sine wave only carry operators for additive synthesis yeah so you can introduce uh, additive synthesis and you got operator four five six to frequency modulation you so you can have combination of those additive and if when so it's a uh, it's an interesting um, algorithm so what does this mean well let's have a look so what it means is that uh, yeah again it's going back to the design of the dx7 you know having 32 algorithms it gives a tremendous flexibility in sound design ah, great yeah sorry it's, it's my amac start going uh, noise again uh, and it's a possible combinations uh, 32 algorithm times six operators and the ratio of 30 to savings so yeah it's a it's a crazy number of combination that you can uh, use to make sounds basically okay oh sorry so dx mark one has a great low end output so it's an ideal bus based synthesizer yep so it's it's better than probably uh, dx72 or tx802 because of that uh, it's got the better low ends so so in terms of c uh, creating a fm based sound uh, it's about learning fm synthesis but it's not easy so we will start with something simple and we will start with algorithm 32 make a bass sound so what kind of bass sound can we make with algorithm 32? Well, let's see. So first one, can we make harmonic harmonic rich bass? Mm, that'd be interesting. Two, metallic bass. Uh, three, sub bass. So it's just low end. That's it. Or metallic bass. It's like uh, you know um, the famous bass one sound. That uh, yeah, the X7 uh, Mark ones is famous for, and the harmonic rich bass. Well, let's see. Okay, so just think about this and just put in your put in your brain and just think through this. And what we're gonna do is to make sound and find out what kind of sound we can make. So FM based sound design. So you got algorithm 32. Uh, it's a pure additive algorithm, just laying six sine waves. And operator six can produce slightly harmonic rich tone. So what kind of bass sound can you make with algorithm 32? Again. Now, <coughs> we're going to find out by making a uh, DX7 sound. So, uh, DX7 bass sound. So what we're gonna do is to we're gonna start making bass sound, and uh, we're gonna start with actually in getting an initialized voice or initialized patch, and then we're gonna make the uh, bass sounds from scratch. Ah, here you go, live. <laughs> it's like a Dr. Zeus. Okay, so what we're gonna do is press the brand function button, so you can see the function button, and then then. Sorry. Then press then press button ten and initialization screen appears. So when you press that, and it says voice initialize. Okay. 
Oh. And basically you say yes uh, or press press one. And then, then that initialization confirmation screen appears. Are you sure? Oh. And I press one yes button again. The initialization complete. So let's do that. So I press the function button first and then press button 10 and then you say voice initialization and you press yes excuse me or press one and it's next one says are you sure and you press says yes and then you get the um what do you call it very dull boring well, because it's just sine wave single loop operator sine wave uh, sound so this is what you get So that's the sound. Okay. Oh, sorry. Now, yeah, so what we're gonna do is to start making the sound. Now we got the initialized bot, uh, boss patch. Uh, press button 7 uh, Hang on a minute. So, yeah, so press edit button What about that? Oh, no, that's right. It's in edit mode and then press button 7. So that's algorithm. So we're gonna uh, Use the data entry slide just put to a maximum and to get to 32 Now once 32 is selected press uh, 8 number 8 feedback and we're gonna put it to maximum Now, you won't hear the change since I only operate one output level is 99. So rest of operators are basically it's got the zero output. So you can put the feedback, you can change envelope, you don't feel anything. So yeah, we have to do something about that. I'm not sure later on. Oh, no. uh, okay, that's all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on uh, output level later. But the now, what we're gonna do is uh, press uh, button 18 and you will see let's say 1.00 <sighs> excuse me and you can use the operator select the uh, the purple button and you can just uh, select the uh, different uh, operator now so let's pick the operator one select operator one and it should say 1.00 but what we're going to do is change to uh, 0 0.500 0. so 0 0.50 yeah so press press one button and change the ratio 0 0.50 okay sorry that was press press minus one wasn't it yeah there you go now press operator select button select all operator to ratio equal 0 0.500 so that means you press uh, operator select so operator 2 and press minus one get 0.5 and just do the same operator 3 0.5 operator 4 0.5 operator 5 0.5 and operator 6.5 okay that's done Now press button 21, 22 and use operator select button to see how operator 1 envelope is set. Alright, it's easy. So operator 1. And what this is what you're gonna get. Oops. Sorry, very hard to control this. So what you're gonna get is operator 1, sorry, operator 1, yeah. Late one's ninety-nine, late two is ninety-nine, late three is ninety-nine, late four is ninety-nine. And level one's ninety-nine, level two is ninety-nine, and the level three is ninety-nine. So basically got put first attack. Oh excuse me. First attack and just go to um look at it. There's no decay, just a flat sustain and it's when you release key 
and it suddenly starts uh, it's like a kind of gate effect. And we will change rate 1 attack and rate 4 release. So, okay, so rate 1 is 82. We can change that to 82 so you can use the slider. 82 and they press the late uh, button. No. Late 2, late 3, and they go to late 4, and the late 4 is going to be 70. Ah, done. Now, once we've done that, what we're going to do is copy the uh, envelope, so press the pink button, W, and the copy select to all envelopes. <laughs> so that means operator 2, so press operator 2 buttons, select the button. Oops. So you basically keep pressing that uh, store that the pink button and then press the operator on off button so operator 3 and then uh, release and the operator 4 and the operator 5 and the operator 6 you can just keep pressing that pink button or you can stop the press again stop you know release press again doesn't matter now I copy the all the envelopes to all the operators but you're not still hearing sound because you need to go and ch uh, change the output level. So let's do that. So press buttons 27 and use operator select button to go through each operator. So beta 1 is 99, but it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So So it's basically, <coughs> you need to increase the, the operators 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to maximum 99. So we can do that. Operator 3, 99, you can use data entry slider. Operator 4, 99. Operator 5, 99. Operator 6, 99. Okay, that's done. Now, now you can hear all operators. the uh, simple base sound but what we want to do is to do a bit more adjustment to make it the uh, 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 more elegant base sound because at the moment it just sounds like a sawtooth sound so we can change that so what we're gonna do is going back to the envelope changes so I press button 21 now what you want to do is select operator 6, so if you got the operator 6 selected, that's alright, then we're going to make changes. So if you look at that, what we're going to do is to, uh, we're going to introduce a decay with the sort of stone. So you have a bit of an attack, and then basically you have a decay, and you pretty much don't hear that uh, sort of sound. So it kind of an attack, but then you got this uh, nice sine wave, just, you know, it's a sustained sine wave. So we went to stick a with sort of sound. So set rate to 33. So let's do that. Uh, let's have a look. Oh. So this is. Oh. Let me just move this thing here. So this is what we're going to do. So rate 2 is 33, rate 3 is 33. And you're gonna have a level one, 
level 2 is 93, level 3 is 93. So let's do that. So great 1 is 82, great 3 is 33. And the right three is thirty-three. Now level one is ninety-nine. Level two is ninety-three. And the level three is ninety-three. Okay, that's done. So what we did was to introduce a bit of decay. So you got level one ninety nine, so maximum, you know, fast fast attack, and they have a bit of um, decay, and they got ninety three ninety three. So it's sort of sound is kind of being uh, what do you call it obtained. Yeah, it's got a little bit sort of sound, but not much. Now also what we're gonna do is to this. The things that, that we haven't really uh, covered before we're gonna do the key transpose so press button 31 now it said the middle C is a C, uh, C3 so what we're gonna do is change that press key for C2 and now you will transpose to C2 so that means you get to play the low end at the middle key like that So that's what you get. Because uh, of the uh, this noisy, uh, this noisy fan that's going on with my iMac, what I'm gonna do is just uh, cut down the audio mic inputs. Uh, where's mic input? Uh, yeah, that's one. All right. Okay, I'm gonna cut down, and you can listen to this. Uh, So what you just hear, uh, what you just, you, what you've just heard is that uh, this algorithm 32 DX7 base, uh, it's a pure additive. You can see pure additive base. So you get the uh, all the sine waves stuck together, and you can create this kind of low end. It's pretty amazing for DX7. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, spring. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for that. Thanks for spring. So I gonna yeah, yeah, <coughs> yeah. That's true. So you can. So basically, you can create a like simple um sub bass sound just using DX7 FM synthesis. Well, you know, algorithm 32 or 31. <laughs> pretty easy just just as, uh, adding up all the sine waves and then bang off you go and you can use that for layering thanks in the spring yeah yeah that's true so you can uh, create a simple uh, sub base and use the to layer with other uh, base sound so yeah, so you can do layering or you can just uh, you know, use that uh, as a base. You know, you don't, so you, you know, you need to have a really good headphone or audio system. Do you hear that? That low end, I mean that low end. <laughs> so that's the low end you're hearing.
Sorry about that uh, audio. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to turn the mic input. So yeah, so Spring just uh, um, sending me the uh, uh, ch chat uh, messages and he's got DX7 too. Uh, so he got DX7 too uh, because my uh, TX802 is out of actions. Uh, I still haven't got the, uh, the damn things fixed. Uh, but uh, the what you can do with this tutorial is that once it's finished, you can just go through this key part. So, okay, which algorithm I need to pick? With how is going I gonna em set up envelope, and how you copy the envelope, and how you adjust the output, and how you change that the key transpose? Because that's all it is. And as long as you understand the basics, then that you shouldn't have a problem. But this this kind of base sound is very very easy to make. So once you run this, and you're not gonna have any problem from now on. So okay, so what we're gonna do is go, we're gonna go back to this slide, but yeah, but this this is what you get. I mean that's pretty amazing <laughs> for the Excel. <laughs> you know you may not be as good as um, some others. You know what do you call it? The bus dedicated base dedicated synths. You know sub bass synths or something like that. But at least you can create something like that. Something that's gonna be useful. I'm sure it's going to be useful. So, so we done the key transpose and we got to the uh, middle key the CT now, and so that the, and we also tested that the lower and uh, lower nodes, and you get that that bass and that that bass sound. So that's pretty good. So he got a really good headphone or uh, monitor skip speak up. You can really hear that bass sound, so it's really good. Ah, uh, yeah, so lots of run out. So take away, okay. Sorry. So take away is that the DXM provides 30 algorithms for flexible sound design. So I think, you know, it's interesting is that, is that uh, you know, I recently explored this as well. So, so it's about thinking kind of, well, you know, if I haven't tried this, maybe I'll just try it. So yeah, it's about, it's about trying it out and uh, you know, find out what kind of sounds it's gonna make. And uh, algorithm 32 is, you know, it's not just for organ. <laughs> no, 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 you can use it for bass, so it's, which is pretty good. And it's, so if you got, you know, sharp metallic bass sound that you created like a slap bass, but you know, often those space sound it just lacks that uh, lower end. Then you can you can lay it together, and so you know it's it's that. So it makes a really good base sound. And you can do, introduce minimum or maximum harmony contents based on algorithms. Yes, and algorithm thirty two can be used for making sub bass sound by layering five sine waves and one sawtooth wave. You know, if you don't want to do one, if you don't want to do a, uh, if you don't want to introduce sawtooth wave, you can basically turn off the feedback and put the feedback to zero, and you just have a pure sine wave sound. So let's let's try that. Okay, so press the uh, algorithm well, feedback, the press button eight. Now, yeah, so before making changes, so that's that. That's the uh, bass sound with the sawtooth wave. So that's just a pure sine wave now, so the feedback is zero. Yeah, you some sometimes uh, depends on the, the DX7 that you've got. You hear this like a clicking noise. Now the clicking noise, I'd, I'm not sure if you hear that kind of clicking noise, but I can certainly hear with mine. And how you, um, this is I think this could be to do with the, how the envelope works. I think it could be a bug in that the DX7 envelope. And then said that the way to uh, solve this envelope problem is to um, basically what you do is now you go op late is operator one. So if you look at the operator one, you go late two, uh, it's 99, and the late three is 99. 
and I think I've got a tutorial videos uh, that you can probably find out that uh, uh, you get the click noise and this is where that those click noise coming from so if you got the operator ones or you know or carrier operators or even at the modulator mod modulator it's got the uh, late 2 and the late 3 like 99 then you can kind of reduce it to like a, you know 50 or 60 and get rid of that clicking noise because otherwise it's quite anno annoying so yeah you can do that to uh, get rid of that so I can show you how to do that so what you're gonna do is to um, so like to is set put it about 50 or 60 doesn't matter and you basically copy the uh, operator one envelope to operator two three four five now you don't want to copy to operator six because operator six is uh, has that its own unique envelope so this is what you're gonna get here you go better isn't it So let's hear that. So I'm gonna turn off the mic, and you can hear just hear that the uh, uh, bass sound. All right, so that's that's how you, that's the sound that you're gonna get, and we fix the envelope. So put the late three, sorry, late two and the late three, uh, to like fifty-five to sixty, around that around that value, and you can get rid of the clicking noise. Uh, you know, it's, it's attack click, and sometimes you may hear release click as well. Uh, but at, when you put the late two and late three, like fifty-five something like that, you can get rid of it. So, all right. So that's that's the uh, I guess that the, uh, the first tutorial for that uh, you know for creating bass sounds on the DX7. Uh, I think we I think we covered everything. Okay. So these ones here. So we can uh, you know a decay and sustain envelope to control feedback so to swipe. Yeah. So that's what we did with operator six. So operator six introduces you know extra harmonics. And what I found is that if it's a pure, uh, you know, sine wave bass, it doesn't sound that good. But if you got a bit of harmonics, like you know, sort of sound, it makes it much more like I don't know, much more useful bass instead of just pure sine wave bass. Uh, so I prefer I prefer this bass than that. Uh, you know, if you just put up uh, feedback to zero. And then now key transports to get the maximum low end. So for for people that use a DX72, you can just basically look at that and it's, you know, uh, okay, these ones are prompt and it just goes through the tutorials and they pick one that section that you need to focus on to make changes on the DX72 and just make some, yeah. And that's that. The next step. So yeah, oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's more of <laughs> spelling mistake there. St uh, stay tuned for more DX7 FM based tutorial to come. And uh, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and support me to keep doing this. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, I have uh, my life been so busy lately, and it's sometimes kind of uh, do I want to do this or <laughs> I want to have a break. But yeah, it's uh, you know I kind of enjoy doing this. So yeah, I like to do, I like continue that. But uh, yeah. If, if I get more support, um, and it's good for me to keep doing that as well. But uh, yeah, so please support my channel, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this tutorial. Just something simple, but you know, going back to fundamental things, and uh, all you know, every time you make sound, make sure just look at the algorithm and think about which algorithm you can use and so forth, because you can learn a lot from just looking at the algorithm, and the algorithm is algorithm is the most important part of the FM synthesis so uh, what I what I'm what we're gonna have is that uh, just like a question sessions for this tutorial so if you got any questions so questions for this tutorial so if you got any questions uh, with this tutorial let me know 
otherwise we can uh, um, we can uh, stop and say see you later and you guys um, I don't know where you guys uh, located but in uh, here in Australia it's a uh, midnight so you know I may have watch a bit of a TV or something and just go to bed uh, but you guys can uh, in the, live in America it's uh, you know morning time and just just enjoy the Saturday uh, if you have to work and uh, just take take it easy <laughs> that yeah and they have a great break and it's um, yes uh, enjoy your weekend so, so if you got any questions let me know okay I have an unrelated one yeah Yeah, oh, okay, here you go. Yeah, so this guy, Orichi Bike. Um, now, he just uh, turned it on. Oh, that's all right. He just uh, found out the my li a live session. That's okay. You can, just, because that's going to get uploaded and get, watch that. But also, I usually make a, uh, like a, you know, not live session of a tutorial, like of those ones that you've seen at the, the original one. So I basically have a, uh, what do call it, these slides. And they have a shots of you know me manipulating DX7. You see the value change by DX7, so you can basically run that uh, session and you just follow that stuff. But he is saying that uh, uh, he's uh, he's got a problem with the Supermax or Grey Matter, and he tried the both and noticed issue with pitch bend. And I can say, tell you the same. Yes, uh, I've got the same issue with uh, Supermax. And uh, with my Super Mac, uh, I uh, get I get uh, crazy screen problems, and uh, my DX7 freezes. So with my uh, my Super, I've got the Super Max in here. It's great to store like uh, well, 16 banks of sand, but the problem is that uh, you get um, you know pitch bandage, pitch issue, and envelope issue. I've got envelope issue as well. Sometimes envelope, some envelope starts slowly. So if you set the envelope lower, so say like a late, you know, slow rate, and it's it's when you press a key, and it's like a slows, it's like slows down really, you know, really 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 slows down. And then sometimes you pray and it kind of starts, you know, catch up on the speed or something like that. That's all weird things. And then it comes to, you know, comes to the point that the DX7 just freezes. And I have to, I have to disconnect the memory, uh, the battery to the memory, um, uh, the, uh, car, uh, the, the upgrade, so that, the, you know, it basically refresh the memory. Otherwise, just you, I can use it. So that's a problem. Um, I'm not sure some people say they got no problem, but I've got problem and you got problem. Now, uh, so the um, Spring said, and do you think it's possible to make P, P, uh, a pulse width mobilization sound on the DX7? Uh, he asked me that. Yes, that's possible. It's FM synthesis. It's well, it's crazy things, crazy things about FM synthesis that anything can be, anything can be possible. You know, I've made a lot of sounds, but but to you know, to, to be honest, I haven't still explored a lot part of the except in terms of making really like a weird sound effects, like effects type sounds as well as uh, drum sounds. I haven't really figured out how to make really good drum sounds, particularly really good snares and stuff like that. So I'm still working on those stuff. As you know, I have to spend a lot of time figuring it out, but. But yeah, FM synthesis it's it's quite deep and it's it's unrealized territory. Uh, pulse with modulation type sounds, yeah, um, you know, it's, it's, um, through the tutorial we we may be able to do that. With, uh, I'm not sure um, if I can find a way to make the pulse with modulation kind of bass sound. Um, I'm not sure, but you know, we maybe try that. But uh, yeah, this, I've, I've made a lot of bass sound using different algorithm, and uh, th that's my uh, my intention is to you know uh, 
put the new uh, tutorials uh, in, uh, as often as possible and it goes through these um, you know new base sounds based on different algorithms so we're gonna explore different algorithms and create a different base sound some of them very you know slightly different but some some of them could be you know, completely different but you know but who knows but you know you, you just try it out and it creates some really unique weird uh, sounds you know maybe you can try some like a growling sound who knows so anyway thank you for that <clears throat> yeah that so that could be possible so yeah spring asked that like a pitch as uh, so a pulse with modulation hard bass bass sound yeah that you know that could be possible uh, i haven't figured it out that kind of stuff i have to explore that and then i have to make a tutorial based on that so stream yeah um i will um so in terms of streaming I will uh, inform subscribers and viewers for upcoming live stream and new contents. So yeah, uh, so last week this was uh, I was intended to do this last week, but I had a problem with my internet connections, and that's all sorted. What's to do with that? Uh, uh, basically because uh, it changed that the internet speed and then we we downloaded uploaded so much information basically we lost <laughs> we lost it. we we didn't have uh, uh, any data ones less uh, left and so i just couldn't get the uh, live stream going but now it's working all right so anyway um uh, so if if there is no more no questions with this tutorial So if you have any more question on this tutorial, uh, we can finish. Yeah, um, yeah, I need to go to it. <laughs> gonna watch uh, a bit of TV or something and go to bed. So anyway, if you guys live in America, good morning. Uh, if you guys live in London, I think it's afternoon. Um, yeah, if you live in Tokyo, it's gonna be midnight, like in Australia. Anyway, so from Brighty, I'm not sure where it is. <clears throat> yeah, I'm so I'm from Australia. Yeah. So anyway, thank you very much for the uh, joining me. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how many people j join this thing. It's good to have this. Uh, um, you know, I guess uh, what about the interaction with the super chat and uh, yeah, great to um, great to see people that you know really still interested in that, uh, exploring uh, this really old synthesizer nevertheless it's great synthesizer dx7 and the fm is so deep and particularly you know bass sounds <laughs> it's unimaginable you know, you can have you can you can make thousands of bass sound using just using dx7 so that's that's possible yeah so anyway so thank you very much and if you got if you don't have any more questions uh, i'd like to stop soon so yeah just let me know okay so I guess so we can say see ya. All right. So see you later and uh, take care and uh, yes, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, to another live stream and uh, introducing more new uh, DX7 FM sound. So so next one will be well because you know Argonus 32 is pretty limited. Um, and so we're gonna probably move on to algorithm 31. So you got, uh, you start adding a bit more uh, FM synthesis and we can start from that. So, all right. So thank you very much and take care and see you next time. Bye.